This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and struggles, and I share what to eat, how to move, and how to think to get the energy and the vitality that you want in the second and better half. We're talking the role of exercise in hormone balance. Exercise influences hormones. Hormones influence exercise. You already know this. I've said it before here at Flipping 50, but you already know because there are days you don't feel like exercising or you feel like the mirror isn't reflecting the consistent hard work you've done. And it feels relative to hormone changes. Whether you knew you were in perimenopause or not, that period of time lasting up to 10 years for some women, you realize that other things were changing too. Your skin seemed to be thinning, maybe showing more signs of wrinkles or more cellulite than you had before. You may deal with both breakouts and fine lines during this time. You notice more hair loss in the shower. So is the answer hormone replacement? What if you are doing hormone replacement and you're still not feeling 100%? It doesn't do all the heavy lifting, or it shouldn't, it being hormone replacement therapy. And you've got a lot more control than we ever might have known. The foods you eat or don't, the sleep habits you have or don't, the way you handle stress or don't, and exercise type and timing or not play a factor. This episode is sponsored by the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women course, and it it's because it's so directly related. It's my signature course and companion to You Still Got It Girl, the book. In it, I teach the module by module about how foods have an effect on hormones, how stress influences hormones and sleep, and of course, exercise, among other things, rest and recovery, talking about how to pull the whole picture together. One thing I know better than anything after 35 years in the fitness industry, primarily working with women over 40, even in the beginning, we want to know why so we can connect the dots to why it's important to do this in the how that we're being taught so we can see the result and commit to what we're going to get. There's no lack of motivation or discipline. I just don't buy into that. There's usually a belief about what and how and why something works that either propels you or that stands in your way. Right now, during this After 50 Fitness Formula course anniversary, you can get not just the eight modules in the course, plus a bonus module nine that demonstrates the examples of exercise. And by the way, this is not a workout. This is teaching you why to ever do the workout and how to plan it and giving you suggestions for doing it but it's not workout exercise videos so we want to make that clear but what you also get in addition to learning how every piece of your life from wake to sleep affects you you also get my bone health mini course thrown in it's just like an extra inside course and so is an exclusive Adrenal Fatigue Masterclass that I did for our cafe members only group. And then you've got all the worksheets for every single module so that you can go through it, keep track of your homework and your progress, and a private Facebook group where you can ask me questions. Then, right now, it's anniversary time. For the course, I've created five bonuses you get right now, but they go away Labor Day weekend, so you've got to get in now. And here's what you get. You get a special Get Started recorded coaching master session with me so you can get the most value and know really where to start and get the least overwhelm. You get a special floor-only strength training program. So this one is a workout. You can eliminate the up and down from the floor. So if you have bad knees, that's great news. If you don't have bad knees, but you have short time and you want to make the most of it, also great news. Three strength training plans. So they're like samples that you could say, all right, 
here are my schedule needs, what do I need, and or here's my level of fatigue and or energy right now. So you've got layouts based on seven or nine days that include your interval strength and your rest days that are the glue to making results stick. You get a special masterclass on fasting and exercise after 50, whether that's a fit or not a fit for you. And what you'll learn is the continuum. So fasting is such a hot topic, but I'll tell you what works, what I've seen work for women that I've worked with, and what backfires. And then you get me inside the Facebook group for a daily tip. It started August 20th, and it goes through September 15th. I'm in there every morning, giving you just one little thing to think about. Yesterday, for example, it was out about drinking more water all day, lemon water to change your alkalinity. But the day before that may have been more about a mental focus. So who knows? Will I see you in there today? All those extras are open as of August 20th, but they close and they go away. Here's the method to my madness there. I know that if you don't have a deadline, you will sit on things and not move across the path and use them. So I've put them in there so you'll use them right away, get started, print the plans, use the exercise, and get going because action is what it takes. So get started. Those bonuses are all in there until September 15th, but you can only get access to the bonuses through Labor Day weekend. So enough on that. Let's talk specifically about exercise and hormones here. You are in more control than you may have thought. And yes, it's less complicated than you might think. So this episode is about really unraveling the hormones we've got changing most right now. We're going to talk about the sex hormones, what they do or did and don't without help as they decrease, and how exercise can help you pick up the slack. First, let's look at the role of sex hormones in the body, and then we'll look at how exercise influences hormones. We're going to start at the top with estrogen. So there are 13 things, and I'm going to rattle them off quickly. They, or estrogen, grows the lining in the uterus so that the fertilized egg can implant. It increases collagen production in the entire body. So talk about that thinning skin. Yeah, here we go. Most notably in the blood vessels, skin, vagina, and the bladder, maintains cardiovascular elasticity and blood flow, prevents the body from losing bone density by inhibiting osteoclast. Osteoclast and blast kind of go back and forth. If you think about the bubbles in a pancake, the bubbles, the circles of nothingness, that's osteoclast. We don't want that. Increases vaginal lubrication and sex drive augments sexual desire. So estrogen has a lot more to do with libido than even testosterone, or we might have given all the credit to testosterone. It fuels fat metabolism, facilitates mental health by increasing serotonin and dopamine in the brain, stimulates the production of progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, and more estrogen receptors, modulates adrenaline levels. It's anti-inflammatory, modulates immune functions, and increases melatonin levels. So with estrogen balance, trying to seek it, so many of all the things woven through the After 50 Fitness course actually come back to, you know, here's why we're eating certain foods. Here's why certain supplements are recommended more by doctors for women who are 50 and older because, say, those omega-3s or turmeric or cinnamon you're hearing about help reduce inflammation. Why is that important? Because we no longer have the production of estrogen alone that we were coasting on. Now we've got to help ourselves. Let's move on. Progesterone. There are 10 things progesterone does. At its peak, it stimulates apoptosis, and that's cell death for anti-cancer. Basically, you want to kind of get rid of the bad ones right? Keep the good ones. It increases bone density, reduces anxiety, lowers blood pressure, reduces cramping, acts like a natural diuretic. So if you're retaining water, hmm, could it be that? Improves insulin sensitivity, increases GABA secretion, is a precursor to cortisol and all the steroid hormones. And by the way, 
Don't shoot cortisol in the foot because it's also your energy hormone. Modulates immune function. So there we are again. All right, now to testosterone. Of course, we have less of it than men, but we still need it. There's six things that testosterone does. Plays a role in heart, healthy, or healthy heart and blood. Supports a body to make less fat and more muscle. Woohoo. Builds bone. Improves verbal memory, spatial abilities, and mathematical reasoning. Improves libido and erectile function, depending on who you are. And improves mood. Now, with hormone decline, physical health may deteriorate, mental wellness decreases, and chronic diseases may creep in. At least that's what you've been taught. And the correlation has been between menopause and this time of your life has been true until now. Until this time when more of us have been exercising for decades than ever before, or we're starting now because we know how important it is. This is important. Understand that the science that's collected data up until now is looking at the past. It's not looking at your future. And that, my friend, is really important. What if you choose not to believe it. During the recession about 14 years ago, I heard a speaker get up and talk about just how much we were hearing about how bad the economy was at the time. And she began her speech with, what if we decided not to participate? I challenge you to think the same. What if you decided not to participate in what you were told is coming with menopause and aging? What if you rejected it? Instead, what if you went on believing you could enjoy an even more vibrant life now because of your life experience and the wisdom and the personal insight into what makes you happy now? Could it change everything? Physical changes that may happen due to hormone decline include the following. Stay with me here. Increased resting heart rate, rise in blood pressure, amplified immunoreactivity, decrease in short-term memory function, changes in body fat distribution and composition, thinning hair on head, arms, legs, and pubic area, but increased facial hair, blood chemistry changes such as raised cholesterol levels and elevated fasting insulin and glucose levels, Increase in bone turnover markers and positive ANA and increased inflammatory markers. Now, tell me this. How did that list make you feel? Think about it. If it makes you feel like you're fighting a war, it should. It's not much of a party, right? Reading through that list. I encourage you to reject the idea that those things will happen or that if they do, they're permanent reject it. They're merely signs and symptoms. Signs that you indeed are having hormone changes. Hormone changes is, they are, a part of the evolution of a woman's life. Whether they occur at menopause or they occur surgically, they are a part of the transition in midlife to later life. But you can opt to change change your exercise, change your nutrition, change lifestyle habits, and break old patterns that will no longer work for you. So I encourage you to really think and challenge about everything that you're reading about menopause and how, how it's so hard, you know, because we're reading and we're planting those seeds if we allow that stuff to sink in. So think for a minute about this moment in time is the first moment when we're really aware of what your choices every day, the impact that those choices have on your hormones. We are raising the glass ceiling about the expectation. We can challenge it, but you can't challenge it if you just lump things into, oh, it's my hormones. You know, it's just not working. I don't know. It's my hormones. And you pretend that you're a victim because you're really not unless you choose to be. 
those signs and symptoms, just signs that you need to make some changes. You can opt to change anything. And here's a hint. Some of the things that you were doing in the past, the habits that you had, whether you were exercising or not, maybe how you exercise truly wasn't working for you. You were just lucky. And what do I mean by lucky? The science we had decades ago was the best we had. But listen to this, 39%. If 39% of all sports medicine and exercise research features females right now, imagine how the low how low the percent that featured females 30 years ago was significantly lower right exercise plays a role in balancing the hormones and if their reactions if we use an exercise prescription that is hormone balancing and not all people all the time what do i mean by that let's take for example boot camps mass boot camps with all ages and all levels it's very attractive to gyms and to trainers and maybe even to you because of the energy and it's fun being in a course with or program with other people of all ages however if we pack them all in and we charge a nominal fee but with dozens in a session it's still a huge win right for everybody until you know the energy and the excitement is contagious but unfortunately, what we saw is injury rates climbed. There's no modification. When it's one or two trainers to two or four or six dozen attendees, when others are driven, you're driven. And yet, you know, maybe every hormone balance problem doesn't need hard and heavy all the time. Let's talk about group fitness. So let's say you didn't go into the boot camp where the big boys are. Group fitness classes are no different. Groups of 25 or 30 adults, you know, maybe more, coming together to either do a workout dictated by either the instructor's mood or energy or a prescripted program may not be what any individual in the room needs at the moment. So once you know how hard you personally need to work, what kind of workout you need on a given day, group may work well for you. In fact, you may thrive on the energy and the music and the fun, but you know you. And then you can choose the best options and the best frequency and duration for yourself. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Given that I love strength training, why weight training exercise for hormone balance? Weight training is one of the absolute best things you can do for your hormone balance, specifically targeting growth hormone, testosterone, cortisol, and insulin. With strength training, you can introduce exercise without a sweat, even if that's something you can do without. Though estrogen isn't necessarily affected by weight training, its effects are addressed as bone density losses are slowed by weight training and only weight training i must say that walking program once you've been walking around it's not helping your bone density more of the same soft steps that your body is used to is not enough overload or what we call minimum effective stress to increase bone density okay but there's more Additional hormones positively influenced by strength training are endorphins, serotonin, and dopamine. Though aerobic activity has always been associated with endorphins, don't overlook strength training because the benefits seem to be equal. Whether you're doing aerobic activity or strength training, these hormones also bump cognitive performance long term. And I'm talking the endorphins, serotonin, and dopamine. After a year of strength training, women improved on executive planning abilities. That's kind of problem solving and memory. And there's also a reduction in anxiety and depression, which women in later life are more prone to than men. High volume, lower to moderate intensity sets with short breaks works. All right, what did I just say? High volume, that means more repetitions and lower weight. So for some of you listening, <clears throat> excuse me, that's really good news. 
You don't like to lift heavy or you feel like you're vulnerable lifting heavy. Maybe you have arthritis and know you shouldn't lift heavy. So that works as far as hormone balance goes. It won't affect your bone density, by the way. However, low volume, high intensity sets with longer rest intervals work better. So it's a continuum. There's something here for everybody, whether it's fear or whether you're starting, because everybody needs to start with higher volume, those higher number of repetitions and a lighter weight to prepare your body for more. And whether it's that or you need to stay there because that's just a condition you have is making that necessary. But you can also go on a joint by joint basis. Maybe your shoulders can't handle heavy, but your hips can do what works. If you're scared, you're just starting, opt for the higher volume, higher repetitions, progress as you can and assess on a joint by joint basis to heavier weights for optimum hormone, bone and muscle, which means metabolism benefit. The Flipping 50 Stronger One program is a moderate to heavier weight training set and Stronger Three is a lighter weight and higher volume program that's intended for both beginners and or for developing a cut or definition for people who've got a great base but also need to rotate. So doing the same program just forever and ever, never a good idea. We always need to rotate and make sure that we're surprising the body, changing the load, changing how we do it. Let's talk a little bit about high intensity interval training or HIT and sit, which I've addressed in a, a prior podcast, and I'll share that with you. Sprint interval training, SIT, is kind of the new buzz. Focus on aerobic or higher intensity, which is referred to as anaerobic work, when you can't sustain for longer periods than 30 seconds. So it's really working as hard as you can, like you were sprinting to a finish line with intermittent recovery periods. The total session time should last 20 to 30 minutes at most. Weekly total hit or high intensity time should be 45 minutes or less. So what I just said is, you know, you shouldn't be doing sessions 45 minutes long several times a week. The total interval training time per week that we now know is kind of the upper ceiling and we see injury rates go up or increase when it exceeds this is 45 minutes. That might mean you don't start there. You start with one session of 10 or 15 minutes of intervals. That's what I do for a lot of my clients to begin. And frankly, that's the default that I go to when I'm in a hurry and I need an interval training workout. It's 20 minutes long, but five minutes on either end of that is the warm up and cool down. The actual interval training is 10 minutes long. Let me tell you, every minute counts when you do it that way. You don't waste time. Your body needs recovery from hard work. So that's the point of that only 45 minutes. More is not better as we've long believed. Let's talk about prolonged endurance activity because I know you're out there. Some of you who love to do endurance activities, you love to go for that six or 10 mile run. Disruption of the endocrine system tends to occur at varying levels for varying individuals. So we can't put a blanket statement on it, but we do know that it's much more likely to occur when you get into activities that last more than 75 minutes. There's a correlation with an increase in negative effects of cortisol. So cortisol, of course, comes out for every activity, every physical fitness activity, and yet it's supposed to. So we, we kind of hit it, we get some cortisol, and then we recover and relax. And that is what's supposed to happen. In our chronic life of always stress, we don't get that. So exercise can help bring a little bit of that normalcy back to what should be happening. But in prolonged endurance activity, what we're finding is it's just too much and cortisol levels tend to tank. So you're pouring it out and they're elevated, but after some point, they may be declined. And that's not that your body doesn't provide enough. It's not that you get adrenal fatigue and they're not pumping out enough. The theory is that you actually do. It's just not received. You have a change in what's called your HPA access. But regardless, 
of which the reason behind it is the result is the same long time fatigue and you know difficulty actually waking up in the morning hard time sleeping you're exhausted but you're you're so tired that you can't sleep so you want to avoid prolonged endurance activity unless you know who you are you've tested progressed progressed very carefully it's more common that kind of fatigue in women who focus uniquely on endurance exercise without weight training and or who only add rather than removing things. So if you're thinking, okay, what I'm doing now isn't working, I'm going to add hit to it without subtracting something, that can be a problem. So it's looking for how can I keep a balance of adding certain things while I take certain things out to test Let's talk about time of day to exercise and what effect does that have on your hormones? Intense early and light late. Remember that mantra. That's the flipping 50 guideline number one. In fact, testosterone levels are naturally higher in the morning. Strength and hit sessions that occur early also work with your natural healthy cortisol patterns. You want to exercise with your hormones as opposed to fighting them. Late day cortisol drops, but your body is warm and loose. So it's the perfect time for light late, that kind of activity like stretching or yoga or a light walk. You know, if you need to accommodate your schedule later in the day can be fine for weight training as well. You just want to avoid anything that's really revving you up. So interval training, the best time to do that is not at night. So what I do with a lot of women who are under a schedule that keeps them from doing intervals early is focus on your weekends. Use your Saturdays and your Sundays wisely and otherwise keep your um, morning workouts during the week to lighter activity and to strength training. It'll be a wiser way to keep your hormones in check. And if hormones are in balance, potentially you'll be at the best energy and the best weight. You're not trying to burn things off. So if you don't do interval training during the week in the morning, you're not behind. You're actually doing the right thing if your schedule precludes that you do it. Keep your exercise to pre-dinner. That's probably the best rule of thumb. And avoid any exercise that's really high intensity within four hours of bedtime. Stretching is fine. A little bit of light yoga is fine. How hard? When it's high intensity, how hard do you actually have to go? This is important because all the research seems to point in the same direction. There's not a lot of controversy on this topic. The key to benefits from interval training when you're at perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause is high enough intensity. If you're just pretending to do intervals where you're jogging and you're walking, but if you would call something a jog, then clearly it is not what we'd call a sprint. And what's the difference? So I would say a sprint is something where you're, you're finishing a race and you're done. You're hands on your knees, breathing hard. A jog is something you decide consciously to turn it up to jog and then to slow it down to a walk. And that's not high enough intensity. There's got to be a metabolic demand sufficient enough to cause change. That's why Flipping 50 recommends always reaching fatigue when you're focused on body composition, metabolism, and positive hormone influence of exercise. Fatigue during strength training is getting to a repetition that is truly the last one you can do or do with good form. During intervals, that is breathless. If you're not doing either of those, you're not influencing your metabolic-driven hormones and you won't experience the beneficial changes. Whether you want to boost libido, regain lost muscle tone, decrease fat, increase muscle mass to boost metabolism, or regulate blood sugar levels, proper intensity, in other words, training with a purpose, not just random exercise, is your goal. Which hormones again? Let's recover. So let's go through this. Testosterone slowly declines in women leading to menopause and then can drastically drop off. Bye-bye libido. And maybe your confidence at work. Increased testosterone can be induced by resistance training. 
And just FYI, men can do this so much more easily and quickly. They go into the weight room. Within a couple of weeks, they're probably going to feel better if their libido is waning. It boosts their testosterone significantly. We have to stay at it a little bit more regularly and a little longer, but it will work. Provided the stimulus is intense enough. You can't just pick up pink dumbbells, put them down when you reach 10 and call it a day. Growth hormone and testosterone have been examined for their role in boosting strength or muscle mass, right? So in terms of you know, bodybuilders saying, should I take supplements? Should I, you know, take growth hormone? Should I take testosterone? You know, especially among bodybuilders, this is true. But the actual role of these hormones is, is backward. Resistance training improves the level of the growth hormone and the testosterone, not the other way around. Increases in growth hormone benefit collagen, synthesis, and fat burning. Testosterone, as stated above, supports better libido and energy. Both growth hormone and testosterone support more muscle and less fat. Resistant training supports the fountain of youth. The role of hormones in exercise and exercise in hormone balance is very clear. And what are you waiting for? Pick up some dumbbells right now. If you've got some questions, I would love to hear from you. And I would love to see you inside the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women course. Please leave a rating in iTunes. It really helps. And if you have a question, please leave it below the show link at flipping50.com forward slash hormone balance. I love hearing from you. And if this episode was helpful, please leave a rating in iTunes and then share it with a friend. Surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. To get the most from this week's episode, check out today's show notes where I include all of the resources, meaning the research sources that I've cited throughout writing this and preparing this podcast. And if you're a science girl too, they'll be right here. And so will the link and all of the details about the bonuses for the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women and a link. So you can go check that out for yourself. So come on over and get today's show notes. Again, it's flipping50.com forward slash hormone balance with a dash between the two words. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.